You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. At the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Community. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest community news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Community. Good morning, Greendale students. My name is James Ross, and I'm your dean for the Community After Buzz podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about Season 3, Episode 9, Foosball and Nocturnal uh, Vigilante. Vigilantism? Vigilantism. Vigilantism. Uh, with me in the studio today, uh, as usual, is Miss Vanessa Lopez. Hi. And our very, very special guest this evening, the writer of the episode, Mr. Chris Kula. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that episode. I, uh, I enjoy it as I enjoy all the episodes, but uh, I, I liked it a lot. What did you guys think? I thought it was super funny. I really liked the sub the subplot of uh, Abed as Batman. That was uh, super funny. Shoe Trended full. worldwide, by the way, last night. Did it? It did. It did. Closet full of women's shoes. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Basically, the episode is uh, it's got two major plot lines. We've got Jeff and his foosball vendetta against the the creepy Euro trash uh, and his training with. Uh, uh, trying to find out, you know, you find out his past with the game, and and then the subplot of Abed's Batman, a special edition DVD that that is broken and then uh, hidden from him in uh, many many various ways. Uh, so where l let's find out what where did you start? Uh, I mean, where yeah, where did the concept for this be begin? Let's see. Um, we were sort of in a time crunch for this episode. Uh, the schedule had gotten shifted around of the, uh, you know, you sort of try and plan out uh, the arcs for the season and, and then uh, have, you know, stories in the hopper of like, well, we know down the road we're doing this and this. And then through some uh, scheduling problems, we sort of ended up with like, oh, we need to write this 309 in a week's time or so. Uh, we don't have anything ready for it since just start from scratch, which is kind of a, a tough situation because it really is like, well, it can just be anything. We're not, this isn't going to be one of these, uh, you know, major uh, seasonal arc pushing stories. It's just going to be a fun whatever, A story, B story. Right, which uh, is one of the things I love about the show is that uh, a lot of the episodes, I mean, there's a, there's always sometimes like a through line that will go through the season, but a lot of them are just like a one-off great yeah. adventure. Good, for one, standalone, right? yeah. fun sitcom, you know, and uh, that's what we were shooting for in this. So it was like, all right, who haven't we really touched on recently? It was, you know usually that would be Shirley stories. Uh, it's tough working her into the show. The, you know, uh, she's great actress, great character. It's just a uh, tough, tough one to, you know, build things around. But then we'd had this idea for a while of Shirley being a secret ringer in some sport, <laughs> having like some, you know, ferocious on the baseball diamond or something crazy like that. And I don't know how it eventually got disseminated down to foosball. Uh, yeah, I was going to, that was one of the things I was like, why foosball? Where did foosball come from? Was there a specific Man, thing behind that, that or just... Was, Lost to time. If there was a, <laughs> if there was an actual reason that came up, I'm forgetting it. But uh, yeah, at some point it was like we started just off. like it's the most unlikely yeah. of things unlikely that she could be an expert in. Probably most affordable too. We can, we can have a foosball table here tomorrow. Great, right? Uh, and then yeah, we started uh, talking about the story of uh, inspired by real life, where Dan Harmon. Uh, <laughs> had a bully experience with a, a girl that he grew up with in middle school whose nickname was Big Cheddar. Uh, and, and Somewhere out there that <laughs> that, that woman, woman yeah. is going to see yeah. the episode and be like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I, 
forget what her name was. He told us the story of how she pulled his Green Bay Packers winter hat down over his head and then wailed on him. Oh, mm. man. And uh, and apparently left significant enough scars that it comes up 30 years later uh, on his TV show. Uh, but it worked to great effect. We used uh, that whole bully thing. And, uh, yeah, at some point, uh, I think the, the uh, idea for them to have had this pass was uh, Chris McKenna's. He's a... A writer and the co-executive producer over there, he was like, is it too crazy if we say that they'd actually met back in the day? And we are like, yeah, it is crazy, but we should do that. Yeah, I mean, not. I, I recalled that at, at one point in one of the past episodes, they'd mentioned that they're about the same age. Yeah. In one of the episodes where they're talking about how certain people in the group are old, and yeah. they called Shirley old or something, she was like, I'm the same age as Jeff. That's <laughs> been a running joke, like, I think season long, you know, I want to remind you, I'm about the same age as Jeff. Like, yeah. it's been brought up um, you know, a number of times, so it was like, oh yeah, it's perfectly, you know, extension of that throwaway joke like let's actually show that they are right indeed about the same and age. and why not have it have been this this horrible Traumatic instance experience. in jeff's life yeah that ch- probably changed him forever exactly and that was a sort of like next layer to it like it's fun just to you know do this flashback see that they've had this interaction but it also sort of was their origin stories you know yeah surely was uh traumatized out of her bullydom and like found god whatever uh jeff was you know traumatized into putting up this facade and changing his appearance and his hair and whatever to uh to put up these barriers around him so it was like oh okay we're not only doing a fun you know stylistic thing we're also yeah getting into the deeper character stuff which i think people sort of appreciate and then the uh <clears throat> the the b plot line the uh the abed's dvd where did that uh, sort of originate um, same sort of situation. Boy, we can do anything. All right, let's do something with the three roommates. We, you know, they moved in together in 307, so they probably had, you know, a couple weeks to get used to the apartment. And just, like, when you start talking about that, you're like, I can see Annie sort of running afoul because she is so, you know, organized and type A that being in the situation where it's her living with Abed, I could see her stepping on his toes, be it cleaning. Or things. stepping on his DVDs, or, yeah, yeah, <laughs> literally. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so there you go. It goes to that pretty quickly. And uh, we're like, all right, so she, let's say and she any ex- any excuse to get uh, Danny Pudi in the Batman outfit again is yeah. always, always good. Yeah. Because I just yeah. happened to, I was rewatching that uh, first episode where he dressed up like Batman the other night. And oh, yeah. So great. He could, he does so well at the <laughs> does, voice. The voice is killer, yeah. Yeah. He was pretty psyched when he saw it in there. Uh, and I think we actually had maybe the DVD was like a kick puncher or Inspector Space Time bootleg or whatever. And then it was that thing of like, oh, wait, if we make it Dark Knight, we can, you know, have him avenge the <laughs> loss of it in the actual costume. So it kind of retrofit to uh, justify right. dressing up as Batman. And and it got to find a way to get him to use that grappling hook that, yeah. uh, that, <laughs> that he got. Christmas gift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You uh, you had Nick Kroll in this episode, and I'm just wondering when you were writing that, obviously you were writing it as just a character. I mean, how far along did you know that it was going to be Nick Kroll? Uh, like? It was fully written and rewritten and ready to shoot, and that was like a late, late casting thing uh, that I actually found out. I had gone out of town for a wedding, uh, so I missed the last day of the rewrites of this. It was like the Friday before it shot, and I had to go to South Carolina for a wedding, and I got the email with the uh, full casting saw that Kroll had been uh, uh, booked for that one, which was really cool because uh, we both go back to Upright Citizens Brigade stuff in New York, and uh, the two of us were in a level two improv class <laughs> back in, like, 2001. So now here he is booked on my episode. It was really – it was pretty awesome. And he's a fucking hilarious guy, you know? Oh, yeah, like, so yeah. So great. Uh, and it really, like, uh, lifted that whole character. Like, he's such a funny, <laughs> likable villain. Yeah, I almost, I, I almost want to see his Euro Trash character come back yeah, <laughs> at totally. some point, uh, which I'm, I'm sure they could find a way to to get that in there. Yeah, um, all those guys were great. They were uh, the 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 two other guys uh, were both named Alex, and they were both uh, <laughs> really funny, good actors, great accents, and then the fact that they actually pulled off the human foosball maneuver. Yeah, oh, that's so funny. I yeah. thought that was hilarious. That was uh that was in the very early stages. One of the uh, EPs at Community, Garrett Donovan, suggested that as like some I possibly 90% just as a joke. Like, yeah, they should, you know, a little guy in the middle and they should do that. He's like, <laughs> let's do that. that. That stayed in from the uh, very first draft. Why not? It's a $25 bit, but... <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, I love the idea that they would just walk around carrying that ball, just waiting, just for waiting somebody to, to challenge them to foosball <laughs> and then, in your face, literally kick the ball at yep. them. Um, so, 
when you what how did you get started with the show i guess is uh because i know we know each other from upright citizens brigade as well here in in la and you've been around obviously go back to it in new york and then out here you you wrote for mad tv before you wrote for this show so how how did you come about getting uh, uh involved with the community uh same way uh you know the standard sort of way is you have a spec script that gets read and uh hopefully gets you in the door and that was the case uh with this i'd written a uh, half hour uh, original uh pilot that was going to serve as my sort of spec sample and uh my agents and manager had kind of you know i'd gone in for like a general meeting at, at um community a year before just to like sort of meet the producers there and one of those meet and greet kind of things and and certainly it was a show that i enjoyed and always sort of you know looked at from afar i'd be like great to work there and they uh, they got my spec to the people who read it and and uh, luckily enough to, was able to get staffed uh, in the spring I guess it was about May of this past year uh, so they read your script and if it's good they'll bring you in for a meeting and if you're not a psycho and <laughs> show that you can work with other people in a room and be cool then hopefully you get uh, the call to get hired and I was lucky enough to get that nice. Uh, so how many, uh, yeah, I'm just curious how many writers normally are on staff for the show, for people out there who don't know. For this show, this season, I think it was at 14, 14, 15 writers. It was a big staff, uh, which was helpful when we were pulling those all-nighters uh, because some people could go home and be there uh, in the morning when the night shift was just finishing up. Like, there were a couple times we were in a real time crunch where we actually had, like, shifts, like, people working three days straight from like morning to night and then the next shift would come in at 6 a.m. and relieve them. And, wow. Uh, so it was helpful having a big staff to, yeah. to burn into the ground. Yeah, so for the pro when the, you start this kind of process, I mean, how much is taken on by, you know, yourself? If you're like, okay, this is my episode, uh, and then you sort of, you write a draft and then you bring it in and everybody kind of gives you notes? Or, sure, I'll or take work you through together. it. Uh, so in this, in the case of, uh, 309, we did that full week of sort of brainstorming the two stories and, and, uh, got them to a place where we'd beaten out every scene. Here's what happens in the scene. Here's how it progresses. Here's how it resolves. And then once that was done, we had to pitch it to the network and they enjoyed it, had a few thoughts and notes we incorporated. And then from that point, I got time to write a uh, spit draft where you just go through and then literally just, you know here's a joke from Pearson that I will respond this way. And just like, you know what the scenes have to be so you get sort of the general dynamics and flow of it and don't worry about jokes. Just like, you know, if, if you have any first thought ideas, you can, you know, jot down as a joke, that's great. But mostly just to like get the story stuff down. And then once that was done, uh, the EPs sort of looked it over and were like, yeah, it's, it's all here. You can go off to draft. And that's where you could take a week, uh, leave the office, go write wherever you want. Some people will get a hotel for the week so people, you know, <laughs> really? who have less money we'll just go to the coffee bean like I right, did. right. Uh, and then you spend time you know actually crafting and, and, and working up the jokes and, and well you're telling me that some of those people that I see at Starbucks <laughs> are actually getting paid to be writing there <laughs> yeah. crazy right <laughs> I just thought that they were you know yeah, I just they lunatics were working on their manifestos <laughs> I had no idea that probably that some of them might actually be working well, on that makes real me, tv shows that makes and things me feel like an asshole because that means i'm there the one there doing nothing and all those other people i thought they were doing nothing but it turns out they're actually writing for a show i'm just there getting my chai latte what a jerk <laughs> sorry to burst the yeah. illusion of the <laughs> starbucks clientele yeah jeez. Uh, so and then uh, so yeah, you take your week to yeah do your first pass and then yep and then that comes in uh, yeah it turns in about a week later and uh, depending on how busy everything is going at the show whether it's shooting whether there's other scripts being rewritten it could either get read immediately or it can kind of like sit uh, and I think it was maybe you know within two days we probably uh, whole staff had read it and Dan had read it and then we kind of had like a group uh, notes session where we kind of like voiced whatever questions concerns in this case i think from the original draft it was uh the ending it was a little different than the there was no anime sequence we hadn't hit on that yet yeah i was i was gonna get to that like where did that come into the process like what the, so yeah you, you just like they're gonna have this battle of foosball but then where do they were like and then it turns into dragon ball yeah there's a huge anime sequence that was a that was a dan Harmon uh showrunner decision like we need to so they're gonna have this final showdown, and we need to get big. And I don't know, could it? Could we have a huge anime sequence? And like, that's something I would never 
think to even broach, but that's the power of yeah, running your own show. You can say those things and then people will make it for you. Yeah. And like even I think like a day later, I'm like, oh wait, we're really doing that? Sweet. <laughs> uh and then, you know, they had to get a animation house uh on that and he had to do a lot of back and forth sort of describing the feel of it, had to find some sort of um uh, reference materials like Voltron and uh, what was it? Ro Robotech, I think was the other one, like <laughs> 80s uh, anime uh, series and like get them the feel right and then get like sort of how the scene played out right. with the foosball and then going back to real life and then going back into the uh, animation sequence and yeah it was a lot of just sort of trial and error with the animation house to finally got what it showed up last night which that was pretty awesome yeah I thought they did a, a great the, job with the, the editing cat. there's like a cat in between yeah, it's yeah. Like super quick it's that like, cat steals the scene well, <laughs> that's a, the, there's so many great like little jokes and, and throwaway jokes uh on the show that if you're really paying attention you know you catch them and i think that's I, so great I think like, those are like my favorite part of like shows is the little subtle jokes that you have to be paying attention for well yeah there was the big uh the, i guess it came after the episode a couple weeks ago the the three season arc beetlejuice joke uh, yeah yeah <laughs> then, like only, all I feel like only community would do a show, would do a joke that took three seasons to pay off. Yeah, <laughs> and it was a big deal when they were uh, shooting that episode. That was uh, uh, Megan Gans was sort of the one who was pushing that of uh, making sure that there was a guy an extra in a Beetlejuice costume, and then it did this pass through at the exact right time. And they may have even done a reshoot to specifically get that when they realized that they'd set up this. You know, like we have to get this. So that is so, so I, it boggles my mind. That is something that back during season one, Dan Harmon was like. I'm going to do this, and uh, the show's lucky enough to get to three seasons, and I'm going to pay it off then. <laughs> exactly. That's insane. That's so great. Yeah, so uh, in this episode, I think the there were a few different nods to past stuff, some callback. Uh, I mean, one, you have Officer Kukowski coming through. Yes, uh, I was very excited to see Craig Kukowski yeah, back on the show again. I was excited to have a, a part to write for a cop when we realized, oh, there's this break-in. Oh, great, we can have uh, Kukowski come through. And, and, I uh, and I love how he referenced his past appearances yeah. on the episode. <laughs> Never. Didn't I once shoot a guy, pretend yeah. to shoot a guy in front of you to teach you about gun safety? Yeah, yeah which I you. wonder how that reads to somebody who's just watching this season. Like, Because it is just a you know blatant... Callback, callback to, to next the to last season, yeah. Theories, yeah. Uh, but for those who have watched and enjoy it, that's a great like. Oh, right, this happened. <laughs> this world exists. And I, well, I think you know, uh, the people who watch the show and love the show and have been watching it from you know, they, the people who really, really watch it, so they watch it religiously and they have seen every episode, and so they, d I definitely yeah. think that they got that, yeah, got that, that reference for sure. Batman costume coming out again. That was real easy. It was like, well, we know he has a Batman suit in the <laughs> rooms. That. That takes care of itself. Uh, there may have been some others I'm trying to think. Oh, the whole, yeah, Jeff Shirley, we are about the same age. That uh, hmm. shows up in, in very effective uh, manner. Now, one now one of the things I noticed from, from last uh, night's episode, and, and uh, Vilo brought this up too, and this is another one of my favorite things about the show. I think the show has the best uh, credit, like, buttons, Oh yeah, the the scenes that run over the credits mm -hmm. from the very beginning have been some of the best stuff ever. The, yeah. I mean, obviously all the stuff with Troy and Abed's amazing, but they're always really good. And so last night, it's uh, mm -hmm. Leonard, which I I love that they have these side characters that that get yeah. to come back often. Leonard and and Eric Charles Nielsen and people like that. Uh, so Leonard's YouTube page where he frozen reviews pizza. frozen pizzas, yeah, uh, which they reference in the show, which is great, and then bringing it back during the credits. Um, like where did that idea come from? <laughs> well, you, have you seen the uh, the kid who yeah. does the YouTube? Yeah, and you, it's like yeah, it's actually from a set of YouTube videos. You can literally watch him get older and get fatter, and like he goes through puberty literally on YouTube. I just watched this like a week ago. Yeah, yeah, they're great. It's this I think, little kid. Is he, I think he's is he? I don't I don't remember if he has an accent or something, but it's like really weird. But like he's like reviewing like treats like i the first one i watched he was like reviewing a bag of gushers and yeah. he's just was like mm, mm hmm these are good like <laughs> like it's like three he does minutes this real scholarly approach to reviewing fruit snack and like yeah it's good good yeah. flavor yeah, yeah. It, and then his, like, his yeah. catchphrase is uh whether or not the product is a buy so <laughs> he'll take, okay. a, take a bite and like just wait him <laughs> yeah that's definitely a buy and uh we were obsessed with that we watched it all the time in the room and uh, that became like a sort of phrase for you know whatever the lunch order that day we're getting we're getting Jersey Mike's oh Jersey Mike's 
That's definitely a buy. <laughs> yeah, like you watch him literally go through puberty. Like he starts out as like a small boy, and then like he's like grows up into to like a big a, an fat obese. diabetic man. <laughs> no, he's not a man. I mean, like he's like fourteen or thirteen now. He's adorable. Well, yeah. if he's You're Jewish, then like, he's a man at this point, probably. Yeah, you're right. I don't so know. take a look at his. Uh, it might just oh, search God. for like you know food reviews on YouTube. I, mean, I think I'm sure it'll come up yeah. at the very top. I so, feel so out of the loop. I had I had no idea, but uh, I I actually I had to take a uh, a screen grab of this, uh, take a picture of it because the the very last second of the show, I was like, whoa, what are all those words? <laughs> and so I had to pause it. And and for anybody who didn't, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it right now for anybody who didn't see it. So the last page, the last thing that comes up on Leonard's video, uh, is this paragraph rant. Um, First off, would someone please explain to me why in the age of digital streaming I have to pay late fees for the movies I rent? I'm a responsible person. I pay my taxes. Seriously, I'm not trying to be a dick about this. I really want to know. It seems to me that the only competitive advantage these rental stores have over the internet is face-to-face -face customer service. So why are you working so hard to make me not want to talk to you? Just because I kept Dan in real life a couple extra days. There were a lot of special features, and I didn't ask my daughter for a Blu-ray player not to see them all. Oh, and by the way, what happened to the days when these rental jockeys would actually watch the movies they have so they could give you recommendations instead of just standing there like, duh, doy, yeah, I guess there's probably nudity in Dan in real life. Well, guess what, Chelsea? There isn't. That Juliette Binoche, though, va 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 voom. That's one frozen pizza that gets my oven going at 350 degrees. Anyways, hit me up on the comment side unless you're a hater or catch me on Twitter at Leonard underscore GCC. And remember, see something, say something, watch the throne. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep. So it, it, I'm curious. Did you you write, write everything in the episode? Did you write it, uh, that stuff? I wrote the full uh, tag for Leonard. That was uh, that was something that I would put in uh, in the, one of the rewrite drafts. And we'd, because I think we'd had in there, you know, shut up, Leonard. I find your YouTube page. What's the point of reviewing frozen pizza? So I was like, oh. We got You're that. talking about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I think that response is hilarious. You're talking about it. That was another uh, classic community room thing. Like, no matter what you're complaining about, complaining about, you know, some show on TV or, some, you know, what you ate, like, well, <laughs> you're talking about it. Right, <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, worked that in. So I'd written the, uh, the tag for, for Leonard to be doing his pizza reviews. And then uh, I think... Uh, in the late editing stages, like Dan felt like it needed something, we started adding those little um, annotations at the end. You know, leave oh a god, those comment. are so yeah. You, I they just started popping up, and I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly yeah. what all, all bad YouTubers, YouTubers yeah. do. Yeah. Click on he the has comments. another one Subscribe. like Leonard's mm -hmm. outfit of the day. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing a pleated chinos today with a <laughs> blue polo shirt. <laughs> uh, and then and yeah, and all the other videos so on, think, on the side. Yeah, there's a bunch yeah. of funny other ones like. When is it appropriate to fold your pizza or something like that? It was like they were all like pizza related, but they were just like they were pretty funny. And that uh, vanity card was like I think Dan's last touch of you know let's get one more just you know detail in there, and I think yeah it plays to great effect. Oh my god, yeah, that's the the details are insane on the show, like mm. so so yeah. much so. Had to watch the throne. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I guess we'll take a quick uh, commercial break real quick, and then we'll, we'll come back and talk some more uh, community with uh, Chris Kula. Right on. Hit us, uh, DJ Jesse. After Buzz TV. Hi. I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag coworkers about it at the water cooler. Then I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzzTV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds, like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzzTV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after-shows, from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives. And more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? And welcome back. Uh, and we're still talking... Community, uh, episode nine, 
uh, with its writer, Chris Kula. We're still doing it. <laughs> uh, so I guess now we, we, we've talked a little bit about the episode, and I'm sure we'll, we'll continue to touch on, on points about it as we go, but I feel that uh, what most people probably want to talk about when it comes to community right now is uh, the unfortunate situation that NBC and all of its wisdom has decided to uh, take it off the mid-season schedule, hopefully only for a very short time. Um, I thought you were going to say people want to talk about Donald Glover's shirtless body. <laughs> oh, I know you want to talk about that. Well, no, we can We can later if there's time. <laughs> um, yes, we talked about that in a past uh, one of the past podcasts about how how in shape everybody is on that show. Mm -hmm. I think it was because oh yeah, from the the last episode we were we got to see Jim Rash. Uh, mainly almost shirtless, and we're like, damn, yeah, dude, he's, uh, he's a lot more ripped than we thought he was. Mm. The, uh, the Dean knows he's going to be put in those crazy costumes. He's got a, you know. That's true. He's when, he wears his, when, when he wears his sister's outfits, <laughs> you got you got to be in shape to wear your sister's uh, Uncle Sam outfit. That's yeah. true. Uh, but, yeah, they're all in good shape. Joel McHale, Donald Glover, We damn. ended up talking about it. <laughs> we did. Um but so, uh, so yeah, I mean, obviously that's uh, a very upsetting for, for all of us uh, community fans, and everybody went kind of apeshit as soon as they heard about it, and message boards and Twitter and Facebook all went crazy, and people starting petitions and getting, you know, thousands and thousands of signatures within a day, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, proves that there's a very strong and rabid uh, hardcore fan base for the show. Yeah, and you heard about the uh, TV Guide fan favorite. Yeah, I vote. I voted. Nice. And uh, yes, congratulations to all the fans out there for making your voice heard and getting them the 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 winning uh, covers. I actually had planned to have all three here in the <laughs> studio. I didn't, but go uh, go and get them. Go to your newsstand, pick them up, uh, because that's that's super awesome. That that that's a nice you know proving the point right there that the fans can can make their voice be heard and yeah. can make a difference. And last night's episode was a season high in the ratings, so uh, it's a nice little, nice to go out strong, you know, and the next week is the uh, Christmas episode, which is a musical. Which is always, always which is always great every yeah. season. And I think this one's going to be really, really cool. It, uh, it's a whole uh, Glee sort of uh, inspired <laughs> episode with a lot of original songs that are amazing. Uh, it's going to be I can't cool. wait. I can't wait. Yeah, that's what I, th I love about the show is there's, they have these uh, just these crazy, crazy ideas that they and they make these uh, episodes that are just unbelievable. The the parody episodes and the the paintball wars and and there's just so many great uh, great yeah. stuff that you wouldn't you never see on on normal sitcoms. That's why I think the show is so important. Not just because of uh, it employs a lot of people that mm -hmm. I, I know personally and I think are great, and I love that they have a chance to make their voice heard and, and be seen on, on, on TV, but it's just a, it's so, it's smart, it's, you know. Yeah, I think a lot of people look irreverent. over it. They, they're just like, eh, it's just, you know, another NBC comedy, but it's actually like really, yeah, like you said, really smart. The jokes are completely different each week. Like, I don't know, I think it's just totally different. And it's incredibly people... diverse, like the probably the most diverse show on, on television in terms of its cast. And uh, I just I feel that because of that, it, it's such a, an important show. Uh, and obviously, uh, so many people love it. But uh, so, I, yeah, you're employed there. So <laughs> so what can uh, yeah, I mean, what can you tell us uh, from an insider's uh, point of view of uh, the reaction to, to everybody's? Yeah, I mean, everybody was certainly bummed uh, when the news came down, uh, and it's going to be a bummer to fulfill the rest of the you know, season order without episodes airing. Uh, like I was telling you earlier, like, you know, that fan interaction is so important to the show. Like having an episode come out Thursday. Right. Seeing what people are saying on Twitter and, and using right. that. Right. We really feedback. love this. We, yeah. we like that. And it helps you kind of guide yeah. the way the rest of the season goes. Exactly. And that's going to be, they're going to continue making episodes and, and, you know, shooting everything in a vacuum now, you know, for the rest of the, the season order. Uh, which is not the you know ideal way to make it, but if NBC uh, is you know is, if there's truth to you know what they say of, of that's just being benched temporarily, like they did with Parks and Rec, then all these things will see the light of day in the spring or summer sometime. And while it'll be a little different having everything completely shot and and produced before you know right. the air dates, uh, 
hopefully they'll, you know, find a home and, and maybe they'll even come back for another. We'll see. But I think everybody's at least optimistic of like, you know, that you can't control those things. The best that you can do is just keep making the show you want to make. And I think that's testament to, uh, to Dan Harmon. Like that's sort of his MO. Like I'm going to make the show that I want to see. And, uh, you know, I think that's why there's some of these great creative leaps in there. Like I can't think of many showrunners who'd say, I want to see an anime sequence that plays into these characters and, you know, services the scene right. for its emotional core, but also is fucking cool and weird <laughs> yeah. on, on an eight o'clock on network. Yeah. TV. Yeah. No, I, I think I, I, I totally agree. I think it, it all comes from the top and with uh, somebody like Dan running the show, uh, he's, I, I love that he has the freedom to just be, to be like, I'm just going to make the show that I, I want to make. And, uh, you know, network be damned if it, if you don't like it the fans obviously the people who who love the show really enjoy it so yeah um and i mean some good news is out there though i mean i just read that uh hulu has picked up the the digital syndication for the show yeah, yeah. so it's gonna be on, on hulu uh and on hulu plus uh subscribers hulu plus subscribers will get the the entire back catalog of the show so every episode and then uh on regular hulu you'll get the i guess the last five episodes right standard um, yeah yeah which is great i think it yeah previously not been on there before uh so you can definitely check them out start with mine start yeah with mine. start with la- last, last night's nice. episode I, perfect timing uh, to send <laughs> that, and then the link around uh and yeah for people who have you know missed a season or two now you can just go back and blow through the whole thing without hulu plus and it is one of those kind of shows where i i will sit and watch the dvds i'll just watch Whole, whole section of the season at a time because I, I watched did. the whole first season in literally two days. I was just like at home and I just wa- I blew through the whole first season. Yeah, those are great through, lost weekends through just... legal. I watched it totally <laughs> legally. <laughs> um, so uh, so we everybody's uh, you know obviously optimistic and as we all are, all are as well and, and there's obviously a, a rallying online and, and everywhere uh, of fans and people starting petitions, people starting, you know, Twitter accounts and hashtags <laughs> that are, you know, trending forever, six seasons in a movie, mm-hmm. Occupy Greendale. Um, so, but uh, what is, um, I guess, I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out what, I don't know what you guys want uh, or what you, what, what you think the fans should be continue to do or what we can do to, to help out if, if there's anything else we can do i don't know uh these situations are so weird and infrequent i don't know what the uh you know as much as you'd like to think that petition writing makes a difference or you know tweeting at the <laughs> sponsors that advertise during the show helps i have no idea if it does you know that's left up to people with a much higher pay grade than me so uh i don't know i don't know how to uh best use that that time during the hiatus i guess just not uh not to give up hope you know yeah but like you guys writers and staff you guys are i'm assuming you guys read all this stuff that the fans are doing oh, this, sure. all this tweet stuff I'm, i mean you guys obviously talk about it right so does that p- play a part when you're writing like i think james touched upon it like if if they're tweeting like oh this character oh, that we or really this yeah is... something that they really enjoy you know yeah, I know I mean, Abed is Batman so yeah that means that that somewhere down guys... the line Abed's gonna probably have to come back as Batman <laughs> exactly I mean um, is that play a part kind of like in your writing oh huge yeah that that fan uh, interaction is like vital knowing like what hit uh, like I think uh, early on in the season premiere we had that uh, Inspector Space Time stuff just kind of as a throwaway like Abed's new favorite show but then fans like loved it and you saw all of the stuff you know inspector space time art and gifts right people like well i mean yeah because now you're you're putting two of the two of the biggest uh, geek things together in community and doctor who like exactly it was like oh my yeah Yeah. (laughs) man talk about two incredibly rabid fan bases yeah small specific niches uh, (laughs) overlapping and they yeah they went nuts with it and we saw how much play was getting on twitter and tumblr it's like oh we should work this in and then you know, let's find a way to get it into this tag and let's be sure not to let this ball drop because clearly it's a crowd pleaser. Right, right. So that's that's the bummer of doing of the, the, the rest of, of the season yeah. without that going on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I still I, I, I still think that it's great, though, because no, knowing that how Dan runs the show, like he'll it's great that he, he'll do the rest of the season kind of however the yes. hell he wants to do it. Yeah. 
he dictates what people are going to like. You know, I'm going to do this, and they're going to come to me. And I think that's to be applauded. And, yeah, I mean, I mean the hope is that uh, it won't be off for very long. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm personally, I'm, I'm really happy to see 30 Rock coming back, but I really, t- this is not how I wanted it to happen. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is not at all how I wanted it to happen. Um, well, it's like when you kill someone and their soul, <clears throat> it, it's like, well, I'm trying to, so, you know, like, there's like a, th- Ugh, forget it. No, no, there's a definite <laughs> murder parallel here. You know? <laughs> NBC, you're murdering our souls by taking community off the air for any amount of time. There's souls in purgatory, is that what you're going to say? Um, well, yeah, but then, like, so it's like a re- it's a it's a really bad leap here I'm making <laughs> to reincarnation where it comes back as something also good. Let's see, yes. I'm reaching here. Forget it. No, I think you're onto something. No, it's it's trust me, it's happening in my brain. No, but it's not happening in my mouth. <laughs> what is that? Okay, go ahead. That's keep what that she as said. A, go ahead, keep that as a soundbite. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so let, well, let's talk a little bit more about your. I, I'd like to talk ab- about your process because you you come from a uh, training at, at UCB and you in improv and then uh, you even taught sketch. Mm-hmm. Uh, through the through uh, Upright Citizens Brigade before. Yep, and you wrote for uh, for Mad TV. Um, is it is different for sitcoms? I mean, do you start kind of with a sketch, or you know, or the sa- at least some of the same principles about games and scenes and stuff like that, and, and build it out from there? Yeah, this was an interesting experience because Community was my first uh, half hour sitcom, and I'd worked in a lot of sketch stuff before where you don't care about the story at all you just want to establish yeah the game of the scene what's funny about it and then boom boom three pages and out exactly hit the jokes hard and get out and uh yeah that's the training you get at ucb is to you know find the funny and then uh blow it out and in a more story driven show like community you really story has to come first the jokes as i you know mentioned in, in writing the draft was the very last thing and uh dan has a very specific um story model that he uses it's sort of based on the hero's journey of uh joseph campbell where the hero uh you know goes on this quest and and and, uh crosses a threshold and has a meeting with the goddess and and uh you know he dan has a whole uh tutorial on this on channel 101's uh website where you can learn about how he breaks down the story and that's how every community episode is broken down you have to figure out like what the you know what's the inciting incident that sets the character on this journey what's the uh, threshold that they cross into uh, taking on this thing. What's the road of trials they have to go through? So that was a whole thing for me to learn uh, uh, coming in is they have this common language, this vocabulary they use there that you can sort of have to get up to speed with and, uh, and, and yeah, figure out how the story is going to work. And that uh, it's cool. And I think like I, my writing will only improve uh, having gone through this, like basically a boot camp for the most intense story 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 right thing. like the end of act two you need to feel like all hope is lost that you know everything's bottomed out right and uh and i think that stuff that is... jeff and shirley hate each other yeah and that uh abed's dvd is lost forever yeah. and uh yeah the shit's really hit the the fan and and where do we go now and that's what things you keep you there through the commercial breaks you know and that's another thing that he really stresses is strong act breaks knowing wow i need to you know <laughs> That uh, I'm not going to go to the the ref- you know fridge and make myself a sandwich. I need to just sit here and and uh, I got to know what happens next. Exactly, and uh, that's that was definitely different uh, in terms of you know versus sketch. But then uh, you do use some of the same things. One yeah, once the story is there, once the structure is set, then you can get into populating it with just fun jokes and callbacks and all the stuff you sort of learn and a good you know button to end a scene and a blow to end the act. All this stuff that is is you know. Uh, stressed at ucb stuff too uh, and an- another thing I-, I love about the show is it's got a real it's got it's got heart too and i think a lot of the fans love the show because of that and yeah. like you see that in that that ending shot yeah where uh, you know you cut back and they're they're themselves as kids oh wa- walking arm in arm yeah and uh it's like they you know have erased that whole awful past yeah, in, really in nice one little shot. Simple visual that, yeah, speaks to the heart. It was nice. We had that, like, right from the, I think, initial pitch. And it was like, oh, that's a great image to end on. And then, yeah, those kids were great. So considering you wrote, like, this episode, do you get to go when they're filming and, like, 
or did you make it a point for yourself to like go and see what's going on and yeah yeah, yeah. Are, the, are the writers normally around when when they shoot for you, the, the episodes? Shoot your episode yeah, yeah you get to go down on set and uh yeah, How it. long it, uh, do it, does it usually take to shoot an episode? Uh, they sh- they try and get it done in a week. Sometimes you know five days of shooting. Sometimes for like the Christmas episode, it was a lot involved. They shot on a Saturday, which was pretty rare. We usually get it done in the five days. Um, usually about twelve hour days. Sometimes it stretches a little bit longer. Um, but that week, yeah, that they were shooting mine, I got to go down and uh, another writer, uh, Matt Murray, who was also new but had had gone through the process. He came down and and hung out with me so make sure we didn't fuck anything up too bad <laughs> uh and then yeah basically you you know sit there and make sure that all the jokes in the page are coming through in the shooting and uh, the and j- then do you guys allow I'm, I'm sure for the the actors to kind of play with stuff too yeah. a little bit yeah um, i mean I'm, I'm sure that the unlike some other shows like uh like the league for instance that has a lot of improvisation uh i'm sure there's a lot more sticking to the script on the show but yeah with such great actors with with uh you know history as an improv i'm sure you guys allow them to play a little bit with the stuff sure yeah different little takes uh kroll actually did improvise a lot of the german <laughs> stuff which was killer right so funny um and a lot of that stuff made it in just to his you know little yeah well he t- seems like one of those guys you're just like just let him go yeah <laughs> just exactly start the camera rolling and just let him go and, and it was a really funny contrast because chevy was very light in this episode had only you know couple scenes and, and the very beginning I very beginning very end yeah, yeah. yeah. book ends it uh and he made some comment while crawl was doing all his uh improvises like, was this guy gonna get a spin-off <laughs> <laughs> actually I, w- <laughs> I would i would watch that too. yeah yeah i would love to see his <laughs> euro douchebag character come yeah. back <laughs> if he's if he's got the time i yeah i love seeing like i said earlier i love seeing those those secondary characters uh, yeah. get get featured people like Leonard and, and Eric Charles Nielsen. I, I is there the like where does, the Muppets <laughs> all the regular Greendale Muppets. Yeah, yeah, like where did that come from? I mean I know like for those who don't know any uh Chris was mentioned it earlier, like Dan uh started uh, with Rob Schraub this thing called Channel One O one, which is a website and a and a screening series um where people make shorts and it's basically like its own little network where people come to the shows and they watch all the shorts and then they vote on which one they want which ones they want to have continue and make a new episode next month uh it's a fantastic site and it's such a great community of people have come out of that um and uh, yeah like where did he i guess he just decided to like start picking out people from from that community to to put on the show to fill it out yeah i don't know it goes back to season one you you write in a character that's a tertiary thing and then it's funny and you find ways to bring that person back and then <clears throat> kind of like a simpsons thing you know or spring field keeps expanding right uh character by character and sort of the same way you don't have the same freedom in animation but uh yeah you, you have your regular cast of star burns and <laughs> magnitude and you know, pop pop <laughs> it's fun to see them you know and it's really fun when you're writing of like oh who can pass through this scene and like right that's how we ended up with that leonard you know <laughs> like the stakes have never been higher <laughs> yeah it's a good time for a leonard walk-in why not why yeah. not <clears throat> um so you're uh what yeah what are you what are you got going on uh going forward well, uh, I actually finished up at Community at the uh, halfway point in the season. They hit this uh, budget crunch, and unfortunately, the low men on the totem pole kind of lost that numbers game. So three of us new writers got laid off, essentially. Um, so that was right. <laughs> it was the same week when they got the uh, hiatus news. So it was a it was a dark week uh, for for this Community writer. Um, but I got the uh, the episode to come out, so I was very pleased. Uh, to at least have contributed, you know, that to the show. Um, and, you know, if they came back for a fourth season, maybe I could, you know, come back on. I certainly didn't go out of the office burning any bridges. All uh, relationships are still good and intact <laughs> right. with all those folks. Yes, I, 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 I wholly believe that if there's a fourth season, I, I see you on the staff <laughs> making more Thanks, fantastic James. Episodes. I don't need you to call NBC and let them know. Oh, yeah. I, in- I intend to get... Uh, James the- takes care of business. <laughs> I will get the rallies going. I, I in- fully intend to uh, make sure that everybody's listening to this podcast and they know that we will not be silenced <laughs> as I pound my fist on the table. Shit, you I- broke it. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, 
I, I love my community. I want it to be around for six seasons of movie, at least. At least. At least. Um, yeah. But uh, does everybody get like, I mean, do they like the the rallying cries out there? They oh, yeah. enjoy that the fans are obviously behind the show. I know that uh, a lot of the stars have been talking about it on their Yeah, it's what keeps people Twitter going, pages. especially now once it goes on hiatus, you know, when like you're asking, how do you, how do people sort of uh, cope with that? And I think that same goes for the writers and the, the actors. It's like, how do you keep making the show for no one at this time? It's just, but having that outreach with Twitter and knowing that people are out there, you know, hoping for the best right. and wanting to see new good episodes is the thing that I'll, you know, the yeah. motivating factor. Cause that, yeah, I mean, they're still, they're not making it for nobody, but it is it's tough to not have that weekly interaction with, with the fans yeah. to know what they're, they're enjoying. But I feel like, uh, Dan, Dan Harmon and the writers uh, it's pretty, locked away in a closet somewhere could still make a, a, an amazing yeah. second half of a season that uh, everybody will get behind and, For sure. and love. Um, well, I guess uh, unless you got uh, any other things you want to throw out there, we, we can wrap, wrap this up. No, I guess. I'm afraid to open my mouth again after that last <laughs> blunder. Oh. I'll just All right. go home. Oh. Just don't, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. No, no, if if anything, we we got to keep hope alive. You're right. Mm-hmm. Got to keep hope alive. Right. Have a positive attitude. You're right. Because if it's, anything, the show, this uh, podcast taught me stay positive. <laughs> it's a it's a working it's a working hiatus. Yeah, yeah. People are gonna the the show is still happening. Yeah. You just don't get to see it every week. It's like it's summer like, vacation. You'll get a you'll but, get a nice big chunk of it. Yeah. It's like when you're halfway through a murder and the soul hasn't <laughs> quite left the body. See, he's got it. He knew. He knew. It's exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. that soul goes into somebody else. Yep. And it comes back. Yeah. Full circle. Somebody, yep. somebody gets possessed. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, so. wow. I know the fans of the show are possessed. So there you go. I With made the... sense after all. Just all had right. to connect some dots there. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to wrap up uh, this week's episode. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we'll be back uh, with the Christmas episode. Uh, probably not live next week, but um, very, very soon after that. Uh, thank you so much to my guest, Chris Kula. My pleasure. Uh, follow him on uh, on Twitter, at Chris Kula. Uh, Vanessa? I'm Vanessa Lopez. At, oh, that, there's an at sign in front of that. <laughs> At I'm Vanessa Lopez. You can follow me at James is a nerd uh, and follow all the stars of community. Follow at NBC community. Follow at Occupy NBC uh, and get on the message boards. Make uh, make your voices heard. The, uh, we intend to uh, to be a loud, loud voice. Yeah, just do something. <laughs> well, Ocu- Occupy Greendale, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next time. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Occupy Greendale. Pop, pop. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.